The Chicago Yacht Club Race to Mackinac, presented by Wintrust, returns to Lake Michigan. With nothing but 333 miles of Lake Michigan between the Chicago Yacht Club and Mackinac Island, the sailors' minds race, wondering what lies ahead as they prepare their boats for the start of the race. It's our first ever race. I'm on fresh water all together. The Mack race has always been a bucket list. You grow up sailing, you've always heard about the Mack race. Not a lot of places in the world I don't think you can be staring at a city skyline like this and get to do a, a world-class event. It looks slow, slow. Uh, the forecast is for single digit wind speeds uh, pretty much the whole way. The racers have done all they can to prepare for their voyage across the unpredictable waters. Now, all they can do is hope for some breeze. Friday, the first boats begin their journey to Mackinac Island with the cruising division start. It's a beautiful moment as the sails glide past the city and leave the skyline behind them. The racing division makes last-minute preparations and wraps up their time in Chicago with one last party at the Yacht Club. Saturday is showtime for the racing division. The earlier starts are met with gentle winds, sunshine, and blue skies. With all of the teams prepared for moderate conditions, Lake Michigan decides to do what it does best, deliver unexpected weather. The blue skies turn dark, the wind kicks up and the rain begins to fall. Yeah, we started with uh, three or four big sets of squalls, to probably high 20s, 30 knots of breeze, kind of rain going sideways, uh, pretty sporty. I think we did almost 15 sail changes in the first three hours of the race. We didn't even bring wet gear because, oh, there wasn't going to be any rain on this race. And then we got drenched in rain. That was the best part of the race for us, was out of Chicago. Happy birthday. Gary, can you dance? <laughs> 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 With faster sailing conditions than originally predicted, the first boats arrived to Mackinac Island Sunday afternoon. The battle for line honors was neck and neck between Eagle One and White Hawk, with Eagle One leading almost the whole race. It wasn't until the last mile that White Hawk was able to overtake between the Mackinac Bridge and Round Island Lighthouse. We turned the corner at Gray's Reef and we had a dead shot to the island. They just looked away at us constantly and constantly and constantly. We did all we could do to fend them off. It made it all that much more fun at the end of the race. The first racing division boats crossed the finish in the early hours of Monday morning. They are followed with a steady flow of boats, finishing for the next day and a half. The race was a 
lot of fun. I feel like in years past, we've had these mats with so many storms. And this year it was nice to have a very pleasant <laughs> ride on the way up. Just the camaraderie between the teammates and just, you know, working together and getting to know everyone and hearing like stories of past Max. So you're doing a race, but you're also creating relationships along the way. As the docks fill with sailboats, the sailors waste no time celebrating the completion of their journey. By Tuesday, the entire island is filled with activity. The annual Island Goat Party welcomes all of the new goats to the society, celebrating 25 completed max. Mission Point caps off the entire event by hosting the awards party. Albatross edged out Eagle One by three minutes on corrected time, taking first place for the cruising overall and getting their name on the new Whitehawk Trophy. The Mackinac Trophy was awarded to the J109 Liquid Lounge 2. First time competitors racing on board the Mills 41, final final, win the Mackinac Cup, claiming first overall. The 114th year of the Chicago Yacht Club race to Mackinac, presented by Wintrust, brought everything from squalls to glass outs. But most of all, it again delivered memories that will last a lifetime.